going on everybody it's master aquatics and i'm bringing you guys another video got an announcement to make to you guys check this out got a baby largemouth bass check out his pretty red eyes and his colors and his patterns his spiky fins when he gets all excited the reason why he was doing that right there is because he's actually eyeing some minnows but I haven't seen him get any of the minnows in the 75 gallon tank. I did put him in the tank with my angelfish, but that's not where I put him first. I actually put him in a 125 gallon tank first with the other fish, with the peacock bass, the catfish, and the sunfish. But he's a little bit smaller than those guys, and those guys have gotten so much bigger since the last time you guys have seen them. I'm definitely getting them big fast because I'm power feeding them, I'm overfeeding them, it, which I'm also doing water changes to compensate for all the overfeeding and the buildup of ammonia from all the waste they produce from eating so much. But, you know, I got it all under control. But the peacock bass would not stop messing with this guy. So I said, you know what, I'm going to move him into the tank with the angelfish, which is a 75 gallon tank, which is plenty of room for his size right now temporarily while he grows and he eats the mosquito fish and the shiner that's in there um which are like gut loaded with bug bites and krill and all kinds of stuff because those mosquito fish and the shiners they eat everything and they are always hungry always just every time i see them it's just nom 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 they don't stop eating they're so little but they eat so much and they pack so much in their little bellies so they're gut loaded full of nutrients for this largemouth bass and i'm just waiting for him to eat those seven smaller fish that are in there and then when i feel a little bit more comfortable i'll move him into the 125 gallon tank with my other predator fish i honestly didn't think anything would happen if i were to put this fish with my angel fish this guy he's way too small and he's way too little to do any real damage to my angel fish my angel fish will be fine with this large mouth bass now there will be issues if he were a little bit bigger um, which is not going to happen because I'm only going to keep him in here for maybe like a week or so just to get him eating properly and for him to grow just a little bit bigger so he can handle any aggression from the fish in the 125 gallon tank. So right now I'm just um, conditioning this fish to adjust to living in a tank and to be on a feeding routine by me and hopefully just to build durability um, and to be able to just handle himself in aggressive situations in the 125 gallon tank which no doubt he will be able to because he's a largemouth bass these fish they're from the wild wild fish are really hardy fish they are born to survive harsh conditions most of the time they die from being eaten rather than just you know weather conditions and stuff like that they can survive um, hot temperatures cold temperatures um, unless it's something way too extreme then obviously they're not going to be able to survive that but these are hardy fish um, and i've kept a large mouth bass before unfortunately that one passed away on me um, so i had a bigger one much bigger in the past and he would actually eat from my hand he would eat krill he would eat small bluegill um, it was fun keeping that bass and that's why I decided to get this one I also forgot to mention that I actually ordered this guy online uh, from eBay and I was a little worried about getting this guy because I didn't know if I was gonna get a good looking bass I didn't know if he was gonna be in good condition it was just one of those auctions where I you know I just wanted a largemouth bass and I decided to bid on one and I got one took a chance on it and I've had him for about five days now and he's doing good this is actually the second day I got him and if you look closely at his mouth you'll see that there's a rosy red minnow in his mouth um, and as you can see he's a little bit smaller in this clip because this is the second day he did eat a few rosy red minnows on the 125 gallon tank but like I said, the aggression was just too much from the peacock bass. At least I thought it was. I didn't think he was going to be able to handle it. I thought that you know the other fish were going to stress him out too much and he was going to die on me. I didn't want that happening. 
So again, I just moved him into the 75 gallon tank where I know no one's going to mess with him and he's too small to mess with any of the with any of the other fish in there. The only fish that he's going to go after are the min minnows and the mosquito fish that are in there, which like I said, I want him to do because those fish have been in my tank for so long now. They've been in there for 3 to 4 months just eating flakes, bug bites, all kinds of food. They would be really beneficial to my largemouth bass. So the angelfish in here have just been destroying each other and I mean like literally just destroying each other. They just have not been getting along and I've had this issue before with my angelfish but never to this extreme and I blame it on how long I've had these angelfish. These angelfish have been inside the same tank for the longest time and I just don't know why but when angelfish get older they just hate each other they just start to hate each other and one day they just flip a switch and they're like yo i just want to kill you i just want to kill you that's it i don't care about any of the other fish i don't care about the quarry cats i don't care about the largemouth bass that's in here i don't care about the minnows all i care about is you mr angelfish i want to get rid of you you are in my aquarium these are my quarry cats they are still doing good still doing wonderful I do need to get new substrate for these guys. I do want to get some sand. Um, but so far, they really enjoy hiding or just hanging out behind the sponge filter over here. This is their favorite spot. All of them group up right behind that sponge filter underneath. Um, they just love hanging out there. And I just love how these bronze corridors, they blend perfectly with the substrate that I have. So that will really keep the angelfish from kind of messing with them. I mean, the angelfish can't eat them, but they might try to peck at them, you know, if they're curious enough. But these are the quarry cats. They're still doing well. They're still fat as ever. Um, they've just been eating bug bites, flakes. Um, that's Those are the two things I really just keep feeding my fish. I mean, you, I can feed them other stuff like blood worms and uh, krill. Uh, I haven't really been feeding heavily on the frozen side for my fish. Um, there's no reason for that. It's just I had just haven't done it. Um, I think one reason being is that frozen food is expensive. Um, I mean, I can spend five dollars on a pack of blood worms and go through that pretty quick because my angel fish will eat a lot of it. Okay, and then the next fish that we're looking at is the man with the plan, which is the catfish that I caught from a stream. Um, I'm gonna link that video in the description. You guys need to see that video. I just caught this guy just out of nowhere, out of the blue. I was out fishing and cast netting, threw a net, cast net into the water, and I got this guy. And I was really lucky to do so. Um, I really love having this guy as a pet, and he's getting huge. I also got this frog here, this albino frog. He is getting huge too. All I feed him is bug bites, and he goes for it. He'll find it at night. He usually likes to hang out during the day up top near the surface or behind the filter intake or outtake. He likes to hide a lot or just chill. He doesn't really move too much unless he's out looking for food or if he's trying to um, get away from predators. So he only moves if he needs to. He won't waste any energy at all. Um, this is the bug bite uh, food that I keep talking about just in case people are not familiar. Um, with fish food. I know a lot of you, the experienced fish keepers out there are like, yo, bug bites is my go-to food. You don't need to tell us about this. Well, there's new viewers here, so this is just a new food that I've been using and every fish that I've given this to that's not a carnivore loves that food. Um, this is my peacock bass. Obviously, he's not going to eat bug bites because he's a carnivore. He only eats live fish. That's what his diet um, mainly consists of and he's getting big the last time i shown you guys the peacock was what a few days ago and he's packed on a lot of size just a lot like enough to the point where i feel really comfortable uh putting my tarpon in there which i'm gonna do pretty soon i'm just uh giving him a few more days in the 29 gallon tank just to quarantine him i'm not gonna show him in this video because i feel like if i show you guys a fish too much you guys will get bored really fast so I'm waiting until everything is right and timing everything and when the time is right I'll show you guys some more of the tarpon but I will say this he is doing awesome and he's he's 
he's my favorite not just because he's a tarpon and he's big and he's huge but just because of the personality and the characteristics that this tarpon has like he's just like a little puppy all he wants is to be fed and loved uh, and the sunfish that are in here are getting huge too. These guys were very tiny when I caught them a long time ago and now they're just getting big along with the catfish. If you guys want to see the videos where I catch these guys, link is down in the description. You can check it out there. Just do it. Just go down in the description and click the link. It's not going to hurt you. You know you have free time. Go and check out the videos. Peace out guys. My name is Master Aquatics. See you in the next one. Bye.